Good morning. It is good that you're able to uh, be a part of this lesson today, and hopefully being able to listen to a portion of God's Word, study it for yourself, and to be reminded uh, of the examples we have from God's Word. So as we talk about that, I want to just introduce this subject, this topic today, by, by sharing with you about vacations. Remember going on vacations and what that was like? Well, have you ever been on a car ride? Some of you travel in different ways to get to your destinations, but some of us, we take a car to get there, and sometimes we're traveling a good amount of distance. And so depending on who you have, kids or just an impatient person with you, you probably heard the question, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And while you're on this journey, whether it be seven hours, 10 hours, or longer, you ever think about what you're going to do once you reach your destination. Now many of us, that's perhaps why we're on this road trip in the very first place, is because we have a plan once we get there. Because we understand that it's so important to be prepared once we arrive. Once we have left our house and we get somewhere new, there must be a plan in place. We must be ready to handle what is ahead of us. And while that car, car ride may seem long, uh, with, with questions that you've answered a uh, hundred times, with uh, your children singing, with your children asking for snacks, and all sorts of other things, that car ride may seem very long, but it will. You know it will come to an end. You, you've experienced it many, many times, that that car ride comes to an end, you reach your destination. And once you reach your destination, you need to know what you're going to do once you arrive. So as you think about that car ride, and you think about heading out to that location, that vacation spot for yourself, I want to keep that thought process in mind for us as we're going through this time, that we're right now we're in that car ride. Here we are, we're having to wait for, for something new, for that being on that other side, that destination, that place that we want to be at. But are we preparing ourselves for that day? Are we looking ahead to know that that day is coming? What will we do once it approaches, once it is here? And what we're going to look at this morning is two examples of people who are in these uh, metaphorical car rides, these people who were uh, in a time of waiting. The first example we want to look at is Noah. Noah and his family, uh, after they entered the ark. So they've entered the ark, and we're going to look at a few uh, of the days and try to count. But if you are reading in your Bible and go through yourself, I believe the count is over 300 days and even close to a full year was spent on the ark. So think about that. They had a, a year to prepare for what life would be like once they got back out of the ark. But the question is, were they prepared? Were they prepared? The other example we want to look at this morning is with the Israelites. After wandering the wilderness, they've escaped Egypt God is supposed to have given this land for them. And we're going to see that they were denied access to this. They, they weren't willing to put their full trust into God. And so the punishment was to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And so that's a long time. And there are those who, who had passed away. But there are those who knew that once the time was up, they were going to be entering that land God was going to give them. And again, the question is asked, were they prepared? Were they prepared? The question then for us in our lives today, we must ask, are we truly ready to go back to work? Are we truly ready? We may want to go back to work, but the question is, are we ready to do such? Are we ready for the kids to go back to school? Again, I, I know many of you would agree and say, yes, I am ready 
for them to go back to school. That's what I'm longing for. I desire for my children uh, to be out of this house for uh, a few hours of the day, five days a week. But we have to ask ourselves, are we truly ready for that? Have we prepared ourselves then? Ha have you prepared yourself to put on actual pants, to put a belt on again? I know there's many people that have said they've had to uh, switch between what pants they're wearing in this situation. Uh, they, they've perhaps gained a little more weight than they wanted to. There's going to come a day where we're not able to wear those sweatpants anymore. There's going to come a day where we're going to have to get up before 9 o'clock. There's going to be a day where those kids aren't uh, having meals with us all the time. Where we're surrounded by them every moment of every day. Are we prepared for that? So let's look at the example of Noah. Now I'm just going to share with you some of these verses. So if you have your Bible out, we're going to be looking at Genesis 7 and Genesis chapter 8. And so these verses I just want to appoint you to, and hopefully you can look at these later. But Genesis 7.13 is where we're told that Noah enters the ark. So this is day one for Noah, entering the ark. Then you see Genesis 7.17 7, tells us that it rains for 40 days. 40, uh, it rains 40 days and 40 nights. So we see this length of time. Then if you jump down to verse 24, you see that the waters prevailed for 150 days. So here it was, the waters continued to remain. They're uh, perhaps to even rise uh, in covering the mountains. But we see this takes place for 150 days. And then once those 150 days are, are over, if you jump down to chapter 8, verse 6, you see then that there are 40 days later, and then Noah sends out a raven. And so he, he sends out the raven. He's then also going to send out a dove. Uh, and this process takes about 14 days in total. You look at Genesis chapter 8, verses 10 through 12. This is where we get that 14 days in total there. And then Genesis 8, 13 through 16, even once he now knows um, that there is some dry land, there are trees that are exposed uh, that aren't underwater anymore, yet he still waits a month before exiting the ark. Now again, I don't believe this is uh, every account, every uh, number given to us about the, these days and how many days he was on the ark. Uh, but if you were to go through and read and do it for yourself and count, again, it's close, uh, it's over 300 and probably close to a year. And so what we are told then, what we are shown or reminded of, Genesis 7.23 only those on the ark remain alive. We're, we're told about how those on the ark would be safe and how those that were not on the ark were going to be destroyed, that every creature with breath was going to lose its life. And so you think about that. When they were going to exit that ark, again, it wasn't for them no fun vacation. It wasn't uh, of now we're going to go be with a bunch of people. But yet, if they had any friends, if they had any cousins, any relatives, uh, grandparents, those who were not on the ark were gone, lost forever for them. Those animals who were not on the ark were gone forever. It wasn't that Noah was going to step out and, and run into a, a herd of cattle. He wasn't going to uh, walk out and see these birds uh, flying over ahead. The only birds he was going to see is the ones flying out of the ark. Again, it would have been a very uh, silent, perhaps, uh, scene for Noah. The ark was very loud. There would have been a lot of animals there. I'm sure they would have been excited to get out of the ark themselves. But really, put yourself in Noah's shoes. Put yourself there, looking out. Stepping out onto dry land for what uh, hasn't happened for almost uh, over a year, close to a year, and here it is. Life is different. 
had a year to prepare, close to a year to prepare. But the question is, were they prepared? Were they looking ahead? Did they think of the new challenges there might be? There's only eight people. And it's going to be those eight people that have to build a house. It's going to be those eight people that had to um, build the things they needed. So really put yourself there and think about that. Are we using the time that we have wisely? Are we preparing ourselves for that day when we can leave our homes, when we can go back again to the stores, when we can go back to those places of entertainment? Are we prepared? The other example I want to share with you this morning is uh, found in Numbers 13. Numbers 13. Again, I alluded to uh, at the beginning of this lesson the two examples we look at, one being Noah, and the second is the Israelites, God's people, who would have to wait 40 years before entering the Promised Land. So Numbers 13, 1 through 2, we'll read that together. It says this, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel from each tribe of their fathers. You shall send a man, every one a leader, among them. So what we are seeing from this standpoint, that the place God wanted his people to go to and, and to dwell in was close enough that they were going to be able to send men out to this place to spy it out. They spend 40 days there, and then they return. That this place that they were going was not terribly far. Yes, they would have, would have had to travel by foot. They didn't have vehicles like we had today. But even though they would have to travel in such of a way, it would have been days for them, not years. And so, to understand that significance of how close they were to the place they ought to have been, and yet they're going to be denied because of their wickedness, because of not putting their trust in God. So, if you will, then look at Numbers 14. Numbers 14, verses 33 through 34. Here's where we see that punishment given to them. It says, And your sons shall be shepherds in the wilderness for forty years, and bear the burnt of your infidelity, until your carcasses are consumed in the wilderness. According to the number of days in which you spied out the land, forty days for each day you shall bear your guilt one year, namely forty years, and you shall know my rejection. Think about the punishment these people are put through. For every day they spied out the land, they're going to have to suffer a year in the wilderness. Forty years. There were 12 spies sent out. Ten of those spies who saw the land would never see the land again. They would lose their lives. And two who were faithful, who had put their trust in God, would not see this land again for 40 years. There were people in that camp that day when they came back and they heard this verdict, would lose their life and would never see that promised land. And there were those young ones there that day that would have to wait 40 years before they could go into the promised land. Again, that's a long time, but it's time ought to be used wisely. It ought to be time used to prepare yourself for when that day comes. And we see that very thing in Joshua. If you turn to the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 10 through 11, we're going to see him now announcing, now it's time for them to be on the move. The 40 years is over with. Chapter 1, verses 10 through 11. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves, for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go, into the, go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. He had to go throughout the camp, had to tell the people, prepare yourselves, be ready. We're on the move. We're getting ready. There's going to be a shift. There's going to be a change happening. Be prepared. So again, we ourselves need to be prepared 
for being on the other side of what's to come next. It is interesting to note with this instance, these people, they, they've had to wait 40 years to enter the promised land. And now when they go to that promised land, there's people already dwelling there. People dwelling on their way to where they're going. And so they had to, they had to fight the inhabitants. It wasn't something that they could cross over a bridge and, and set up camp and say, well, we've done it. We, we, we've gone to the land that God has given us, and this is our home now. But no, they had to fight the inhabitants. There was work for them before they had their goal, their reward. But we see it finally fulfilled in Joshua 21. Joshua chapter 21 Verses 43 through 45. We're going to see God blesses his people. He gives them exactly what he said he would give. <clears throat> it says this. So the Lord gave to Israel all the land of which he had sworn to give to their fathers. And they took possessions of it and dwelt in it. The Lord gave them rest all around according to all that he had sworn to their fathers. And not a man of all their enemies stood against them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. Not a word failed of any good thing, which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. God fulfilled his word. God fulfilled his promise. And here these people are now in the place where they ought to have been 40 years ago had they put their trust in God. Here they are finally home, finally a place to be away from. Uh, from the persecution of those in Egypt, here they were. And they were going to now have to live faithfully unto God. No longer blame the hardships uh, and the distractions on the Egyptians or on anyone else. Now it's up to them to live faithfully unto God. So as I said before, many of us are looking forward to that day when we can leave our homes. We want to be around groups of people again. I've heard that even introverts, those who want to keep to themselves, those who like being homebodies, are perhaps missing interactions with people, are missing those short trips to the store. And why we're looking forward to those things, the question has to be, are we truly prepared for some changes that need to be taken? Are we prepared for what it will look like. It may be different, like in the case of Noah and his family. There might be a challenge or two, as we see with the Israelites, that the land wasn't just given to them, but yet they had to fight the inhabitants there. So are we prepared to be out on the other side of this? Are we looking forward to, uh, are we prepared for when we have to go back to our work schedules, when we have to go back uh to being out of the home, not having that time to do house projects. Are we prepared for those things? Is still making time for our families when we go back to the busyness of life? Are we prepared? So I want to, at this time, uh, those that will be on the phone call this evening, Again, that will be at 6 o'clock. But here's what I hope for us to discuss on the phone. We will continue to look at examples from the Bible and ask if people are ready for the change in their lives. So we went over two examples this morning, but we're going to go into, uh, and many of them will be from the New Testament, but maybe perhaps you can think for yourself of examples of people in a situation uh, and being prepared for the aftermath being prepared for what was to come next. We are seeing people's hopes and dreams being fulfilled. You think about Noah and his family. I'm sure they were well taken care of. I'm sure they had the food they needed. I'm sure they were warm. They were living uh, as comfortable as they could on the ark. But I'm also sure they were imagining, they were looking forward to that day where they weren't confined to the ark. And you think about those people, those people, the Israelites, who are wandering in the wilderness, knowing there's going to come a day 
and we're going to see that land that God has given us. Think about Joshua and Caleb. They saw the wonder, the glory of that land. They knew how great of a place it was. But they were going to have to wait 40 years. And so as we read about these people, we read about, perhaps again, those hopes and dreams. And we see that they are fulfilled. But do they ever think what they would do once, they, once those hopes became a reality? Uh, something they had longed for finally came and it was finally that day of experiencing it. Were they prepared for it? Was it always in their mind something that, well, one day we'll be able to obtain that? And again, I ask that we, ourselves, in this situation in life, keep that in our for for forefront. We ask ourselves, are we prepared? So I leave you with this this morning. If God is capable, and he is, of getting us through the storm, then what will we do once we get out on the other side? We talked last week about the storms of life. And you could almost look at these examples today and talk about the storm of being in the ark, the storm of being out in the wilderness. And even though they were going through that, God gets them through. What will we do once we get out on the other side? There's something better waiting for you on the other side of the storm. Do you believe that? Life on the other side of the storm will be different. And the question is, are you prepared? If we can pray for you, and if we can help you in any way, and if we can uh, help you become a servant of God, please let us know. And again, I always, I, I've been saying this, but it is so true. I look forward to the day when we're able to meet in person, person worshiping God together again.